what's going on boys and girls so we are here with a another reaction video now it's been a, i know it's been a little mia uh, life and all that jazz so let's get into this one this is by uh somebody i actually really do enjoy uh this is like city also known as viper 29 or a few other different ones um generically i i really do enjoy his content so i'm curious to see what he has to say this has to do with the whole Linux men should die thing from uh, Tech Republic and yada yada whatever. Um, but let's get into what he has to say because uh, I am actually quite curious to see what he has to say about this. Hey folks, welcome to Linux City. Today we're going to talk about Linux Mint and the hate that it keeps getting. And I'm not sure why that that is. Um, from different channels, uh, it all started with an article on Tech Republic. Um, if I hit the back button, I probably still have it there. Yeah, let's go to that. This is exactly what I'm talking about here. We'll pause this so that way we're not copying that video over here. Um, basically, it's time for Linux Mint to go. Um, I don't know why why that's even a thing. And even DistroTube had mentioned about killing Linux Mint. Um, Linux Gamer had talked about it. I don't want to go into great detail with it because I don't want to be repeating what everybody else has been saying. But we're going to go right back over to Linux Mint and I'm going to give you the history, um, my history with it. It's been mostly positive. Um, very stable. Um, I love the Cinnamon Desktop. That's what got me into the Cinnamon Desktop was Linux Mint. Linux Mint so before he gets into his personal history um uh, personally for me i used linux mint i think it was 17 as my daily driver for oh god all until 17 3 i believe and then i switched away and i ended up going like i distro hopped to like there's no tomorrow and i have yet to actually stay on a distro Thank you, certain Big Daddy Linux Live challenges now that I no longer can actually have a distro that I can call my own. <laughs> um, but the short version is uh, Cinnamon is Cinnamon. It, it's very much a Windows paradigm. It's, it's a love it or hate it. You're either going to like it or you won't. Um, for me, it, it's familiar and I guess it's kind of boring. Like it's not different enough. It's st uh, solid and stable are good if that's what you're looking for, but there there's some problems with Mint. Uh, but I, I want to hear what you have to say before I really say why I have an issue with Mint. Um, it was very stable for me. Um, my first distro was Ubuntu though. Um. Ubuntu, I want to say 6.10, 704 maybe. Um, but then I started hearing about Linux Mint later on. And I'm like, I got to try this distro. And I couldn't believe even the Cinnamon Desktop at that time, I, I thought, was ahead of its time. Because at that time, I believe when I was trying things out, I think XP was still on most people's systems. So the fact that you could theme things without having to modify files, you could actually just click the button, change the themes, and not have to modify the system files at all. Whereas in XP, you had to do some modifications to get things to work correctly. Um, and then it got more difficult as you got to Vista and 7. Because we know how locked down Windows can be, right? <laughs> All right, um, but Mint has been around for a very long time. Um, if we hit the About button, I don't think... Um, if we probably go... Actually, it says 2006. So, I'm pretty certain if we... It's funny how Tech Republic just comes up on that, on that feed. <laughs> yeah, their initial release date was in 2006. So, it was a little after Ubuntu, like I said... Because um, I was messing around with Ubuntu around this time, and then I met and I heard about Linux Mint, and I gotta tell you, I loved it. I, I was around for the the uh, the six hundred four, you know, uh, six ten, seven hundred four release. Uh, Gutsy was pretty much what I cut my teeth back on into Linux, and use. It, 
has always been, you know, Linux on a secondary machine ever since then. Before, you know, you dabble with it, you try, you know, I mean, my, my first experience with Linux was back in 99 with Mandrake. Before Mandriva, before Magia, before all of that. And the thing that I found, and I'm just going to give my honest take on Mint, it included Codex, Flash, and other stuff that Ubuntu didn't include out of the box. And that was really its biggest selling point at that in the, in the, the six and seven days. That really was its biggest selling point. It included some stuff that if you didn't know what FFmpeg and GStreamer and all these other, you know, good, good, bad and universal codecs and ugly codecs and all this other stuff were, then Mint was the way to go. It was Ubuntu with codecs. And it required a little bit less customization, I guess, out of the box. But um, to me, it was just Ubuntu with codecs and Flash. That's just my take. I loved it. I still like Linux Mint. I just don't use it as often, but it's a nice little distro. Um, uh, Geek Outdoors, uh, if you haven't checked his channel, he uses it on a daily. So it's it's all about what you guys want the fact that we're we're out here saying we should be killing a distro <laughs> uh well considering the fact that Antargos is no longer um i understand there's hundreds of distros out there and these things die all the time okay i get that we one dies one's born that's just the way it happens that's how the linux ecosystem is okay you're gonna have distros coming and going and the hate that linux mint is getting is unjustified it really is you can hate it but don't preach to the mountain that it should be killed you know Most now it's been a while since i've done or used the mint because there was some concerns um, honestly, my biggest gripe, and this is something that other people that actually work on the thing that, you know, Linux Mint pulls from, which is Ubuntu, has stated that the biggest concerns with things like Mint is at one point that they would hold back important updates, kernel updates, or, you know, take your pick, you know, with, with the one, two, three, four, one, two, three numbering system in their update manager and they would automatically if it was a certain level wouldn't apply them until it went up into a, a another level as that is a dangerous thing especially if it's a um, security update a, a really really important security update so you know something for meltdown respect or you know whatever um and to hold those back is questionable. And, and that's a legitimate concern and a legitimate critique of the distro. I don't think that's hate. I, I think that's a legitimate critique. Now, they've addressed that apparently, but again, I haven't used Mint for a while because it, it doesn't suit me, which, again, perfectly fine. You, if you want to use Mint, use Mint. If you want to go use slackware i really don't care but to say that the hate is unjustified certain things and certain concerns are justified i would now already hate no that like that that's not justified multiple places were saying this it wasn't just you know distro tube or tech republic saying that it should go away blah 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 you know the thing is, it's good to have these because if you got newcomers coming in, you know, just because you may know a lot about Linux, you know, some of you out there, doesn't mean that the new person that's coming in, they, they're going to learn this stuff, you know, and then coming in and seeing all this hate, they're not going to want to deal with Linux. They're going to go back to Windows or go to the Mac, 
or use their Chromebook or whatever it is that they use. They're not going to come to Linux if they keep seeing this. What kind of what what kind of community is that? That's that's not. It should be what you want to use, not what you tell them they should be using. Because on this channel here, you're not going to see that. You're going to see overviews, but you're not going to see me telling you or making you. I don't know how the hell I could make anybody do anything on a, on a video, but <laughs> if I have that power, wow, then I'm in the wrong business. I certainly shouldn't be working where I'm at, and I should be channeling people on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, seriously, folks, it, it's it's what you make of it. Linux is whatever you want it to be, okay? Linux Mint is here to stay, and I hope it doesn't go anywhere. I'm hoping the people behind it, I believe the guy, uh, the person's name is Clem. Um, I hope they don't go anywhere, because I know there's more than just one person that's running it. Because that would really suck. It... it that would be a huge blow to the Linux community, and people wouldn't even realize it. Let's just say if we lost Linux Mint and Ubuntu. That would be a major blow, even if you hate it. Even if you hate these distros. That would be a huge blow. You have no idea. No, I don't want to hear about go to Arch or whatever. Not a lot of new people can do that. Okay. Uh... So let's talk Ubuntu and Mint first, and then we'll go from there. Uh, those going away would do a huge disservice to the community. I will not deny that. Um, if you want a good GTK-based, uh, <laughs> a, GT a current GTK-based uh, file manager, use Nemo. Files. Now let's just say... The GNOME people need to learn that I kind of like executing files from the file manager. Novel idea. Um, even though they backtracked on that. They make questionable decisions. Nemo is made so those questionable decisions are not there. So I like a lot of the work around Mint. Might not necessarily care for Mint itself just because it doesn't fit my needs. Um... Do I want it to die? No, that is stupid. Do I want Ubuntu to die? No, that is stupid. What they contribute to the community is more than they will ever get credit for. Um, what Canonical slash Ubuntu has contributed to the community is more than they will ever get credit for. What Mint has contributed to the community will be more, will be more than the community will ever give them credit for. End of story. But it is perfectly fine to criticize and critique constructively about the pros and cons of what these distros and these distro maintainers and these distro makers do with the distribution. That is perfectly fine. Wishing death upon a project or a product is, quite frankly, fucking dumb. And it shows people's how naive people are because they think their choice is the only right one. I'm going to hate to break it to them. Your choice is right for you. Not necessarily everybody else. You mentioned the, the arch thing. Any dumbass that mentions... Oh, go use Arch. It depends on the user. I will never, for the life of me, ever recommend that somebody go and use a rolling distribution if you are a I just want it to work type. And the reasoning is not because of why most people would think. It's not about the latest and greatest drivers. It's not about the latest and greatest this and that. You have to tailor the experience based on the person's ability level, the, the, the what the person's needs are. There is so much you have to look at when you do recommendations that just saying, oh, go use Arch, go use Manjaro, go use Solus, go, you know, pick said rolling distribution. 
nah. Look at what the user needs. If these guys are like Windows 7 holdouts, I'm going to tell them, probably go use Ubuntu, Kubuntu, probably Kubuntu personally if they're used to that Windows paradigm. They can probably get a little more used to the the, the GNOME paradigm in, it, with Ubuntu if they're, they're from the Mac. I'm personal personal opinion we all have them um so but i would never recommend arch anything rolling now das geek you and i will disagree will agree to disagree on this because i know you would actually recommend rolling i would not because i base my decisions on recommendations based on experience levels and the person's needs and I think that is the only way to make real recommendations because it's not about what you want. It's about what other people want and need. And I'm not going to recommend Manjaro because even that can be daunting for a new person. I used to be that new person. I know what it's like. I know what it's like to go into a distro and just be afraid of breaking something. You know, or, or just not knowing what to do. I used Google a lot. I used search engines, YouTube videos to learn Linux. I've learned from a lot of people out there in the Linux community on how to do different things. And I'm loving it. When we used, first used Windows or DOS, we didn't have Google, okay? We had to learn this on our own. Or we had to go to a, maybe a computer class or something like that. But folks, please, for the love of God... Don't, please don't turn around and start saying you're going to, you want things to, that, that, you know, to kill off a distro. Because that's a bad, bad thing. You don't want to be doing that. Because then you start having a domino effect. What do you want to do? Kill the Linux community? You don't want to do that. It's all about what you want to use. That's what it should always be about. Use what you feel comfortable with. You can use something that nobody else is using. It doesn't matter as long as you're happy with it. I don't want to rant too long. I don't want this video to be too long. But I do want to say this. Just, just, just be comfortable with what you're doing. With what, with, what, with what you use. If you're not comfortable with it, just use something else. That's all. So... Thanks again, guys, for watching. And if you haven't done so, please subscribe. It really does help the channel out a lot. And this is Linux City saying take care. And with that being said, I do agree for the most part with what Linux City was saying. I think that wishing death upon a project is just moronic on so many levels. Like, like come on, are, are we three? Seriously, I wish you die. No, you don't want projects to die. I, I am no fan of GNOME as far as a lot of the stuff that they do, a lot of the decisions they make. I don't wish death upon the project. Any cr criticisms, no matter how vulgar I've been, have been to try to get them to understand that there are users that their decisions affect. And when you make recommendations for stuff that people should be using, those decisions that you're making affect those users in the same way that anything that GNOME does upstream affects downstream. So, personally, I'm going to agree with a lot of what Viper or Linux City was saying in that regard. Um, take personal preference out of it, though. Like, any recommendations you make, doesn't matter if it's Linux, doesn't matter whatever it is. Give all the options to somebody. Keep your own shit out of it. You know, like, like, if you rock windows cool but if somebody's just like hey i need this 
you know, and you're not the biggest Chromebook fan. Maybe that's what they need, though. Who cares what you want? What at the end of the day, what matters is what they want and they need. And you can still keep using what you want and what you need. As an example, workstation right now that I'm recording this on runs Manjaro with a DE called the shell that not a lot of people use. And the whole reason I do that is because it fits my needs. But I will be the first to tell someone that it is not the end all be all desktop. There are problems that I see with it. And that's just what it is. But it works for me. I'm not going to recommend enlightenment, uh, generically speaking. Um, there are other things that I would not recommend, even if I love them, because it's not the right call to make. So use what works for you, but also make recommendations without your own shit in it. Oh, go use Slackware. That's what I know. You're a dumbass. If you're recommending that type of mentality to a new user, please do the world a favor and slap yourself stupid with your laptop. Because it might beat some sense into you. Because your opinion and your needs are not the needs and wants and opinions of everybody else. So, at the end of the day, what's your guys' take? Is Viper right? Is this a dumb thing to do? You know, are, are we calling for the death of Linux Mint because we're, we're, we're unhappy with it and all that? We hate it. Or are, are people calling for it because they don't feel that it's relevant? That's the real question. Is it relevant anymore to what it originally was needed for? For me, I don't know. It, it's not relevant to me, but it might be relevant to new users. And to lose something that might be relevant to new users is not something you want to lose. So, I'm done. Peace out. You guys know what to do. Rate it, subscribe.